And now your host, Richard Thomas. Good evening and welcome to It's a Miracle. We receive thousands of letters from our viewers, many with suggestions for stories, like this one from a convent in Chicago, Illinois. Dear Richard, thank you for your inspiring shows. We watch every chance we get. Perhaps you have used the enclosed miracle, but in case you haven't, it's been an inspiration to me. Sincerely, Sister Pauline Ann Furiel. Well, we were very flattered that the nuns enjoyed our show, but we were even more intrigued by what the good sister had enclosed. And we think you'll find it just as inspirational as she did. Rhonda and Ken Gill both loved their daughter Desiree immensely, but Desiree was always daddy's little girl. Desiree was dad's little shadow. They go fishing, camping, go out on a boat, sit and read stories. Her favorite story was The Little Mermaid. It was hard to get Desiree to want to hear a different story. He tried to talk her into a different one, pick another one. That's the story she liked. So that was their story. But early in 1993, their storybook life came to an end. Ken severely injured his back and was forced to quit his job. He faced surgery that could leave him permanently paralyzed and wheelchair bound. Anxious and despondent, Ken tragically took his own life. I was 23 years old when Ken died. It was hard for me to deal with what I was going through, but I had to help Desiree. And that was hard, uh, not knowing what to do. Rhonda turned to her mother, Trish, for support and guidance during these emotional times. When Ken died, that was devastating to my daughter to lose him that way and not be aware that he was going through such pain. But as hard as it was for Rhonda, it was bewildering for little Desiree. Desi was only four at the time, and she wasn't able to understand why Daddy didn't come home. Honey, Desi, you know that your Daddy's not coming back anymore, don't you? She didn't understand what death meant, and we had a very difficult time trying to explain it to her. But there's one thing I want you to know, sweetheart. He loves you so much. She thought maybe he'll be back in a couple days when she woke up in the morning. And the longer it was, the worse she got. Desiree spent hours each day waiting for her daddy to return. Desi would go to her room, sit alone, look out the window, wait to see him pull up. Daddy? At times, she'd pick up her little toy phone and she'd pretend she was talking to her daddy. I miss you. She didn't want to be around anybody. She just didn't really want to interact. Grandma, that's dead. In the evenings, Rhonda and I would sit out on the front porch with Desi and look at the stars and we'd pick out the bright one and we'd tell Desi that it was her daddy in heaven. Look, what's that star up there? What is what that is star? That's daddy. And she seemed to like the idea that her daddy was up there, bright and shining. But then yet, she still wanted to know why he wouldn't come home. Be right here with us, OK? One evening when she went to bed, she said, Mommy, can I die so that I can go to heaven and be with daddy? And for me, that was devastating. Sweetie, I need you to stay right here with me, OK? How do I tell her? What do you do? <laughs> Gotta take your beautiful picture and make sure Daddy gets a copy. Perhaps a visit to her father's gravesite would help her understand. What do you want to say? I love you. But here, you write that to Daddy. 
We took Desiree out to the cemetery because we wanted to give her a place that she could go to, that she could feel like her father was there. So we would tell her that that was his mailbox to heaven. Anytime she wanted to talk to him, we would bring her out there. But their frequent visits only made matters worse. We'd go back out there, and her picture would still be out there. How come Daddy didn't take my letter? And it would really upset her, because Daddy wasn't getting her pictures. So I felt like we created another problem. Instead of helping her, it was you know, hurting her again. They needed to come up with a solution, and fast. Ken's birthday was coming up in November, and Desiree wanted to tell her daddy happy birthday. What can we do? Well, what if we buy one of those helium balloons? Well, so my mom came up with the idea to write him a letter and tuck to a balloon. And we can let her send it off to heaven. I was kind of unsure about it, you know, giving her false hopes thinking, well, Dad's going to get it, and then he's going to come home or right back. All right, let's find you a balloon. But we talked to Desiree, and that's what she wanted to do. Pick out which one you like. lot of them. When we took Desi into the store to pick out a balloon, there were all kinds of balloons. Right, you want to pick out a balloon? Oh, my goodness. Look, honey, they're all She here. spotted a little mermaid balloon. I want the mermaid balloon. That's Daddy's favorite. And right away, that was the one she wanted because the Little Mermaid was something special between her and her dad. Remember the last time we were here? That afternoon, they returned to the cemetery to launch Ken's birthday balloon, along with a note from Desiree. Take a hold of the end of that. Got a little piece of plastic, and we wrapped it around the little note, and we taped it to the balloon. You ready? OK. Hold on. We said a little prayer, and she released the balloon to heaven. And go. And we watched it go forever. Daughter and I started walking off, and Desiree sort of lingered behind. She kept watching. Mom, did you see that? See what, honey? I saw Daddy take the balloon. And she goes, did you see Daddy? And he reached his hand down and took the balloon. And it just gave him goosebumps all over because the balloon was gone. And she was just happy. Come on, honey, let's go home. <sighs> Time to go. Desiree's note contained a very special request of her father, a request that would take a miracle to be answered. But that miracle was about to happen in an astonishing, almost unbelievable set of circumstances. We'll be right back. Traumatized by her father's tragic death, four-year-old Desiree wrote him a letter and sent it to heaven tied to a little mermaid balloon, hoping for a reply. Four days later, and nearly 3,000 miles away, Wade McKinnon was duck hunting near his home on Prince Edward Island in eastern Canada. That day, he'd chosen to hunt for the first time along the shores of Mermaid Lake. I don't really know why I went to Mermaid Lake that day. I had never hunted the area before. I just decided that that was the day I was going to go up and find my way into the lake and, and to see if there was any birds in the area. What he found instead was something completely unexpected. I noticed something off to the south. A flick of sun light off some shiny object. I wasn't sure exactly what it was until I'd worked my way up close enough to get a better view. It was a helium-filled mermaid balloon. It was Desiree's balloon, and somehow it had come down to Earth long enough to get caught on a bush near the water's edge. There was a note attached in a sandwich baggie. The note was saturated, so I didn't open the baggie right out there in the marsh, because if, if I did, then the paper would have fell all apart. 
Wade tucked the note into his pocket and untangled the balloon to take home to his children. When I got home, the balloon was still fully inflated. I uh, took the balloon and wrapped it around my upstairs railing. I uh, had the opportunity at that time to read the note. I opened the note, laid it out to dry so the ink wouldn't run. Happy birthday, Daddy. I love and miss you. I hope you have a good birthday in heaven since this is your first one with Jesus. I was heartbroken when I read that letter. To see a little girl that's hurting, but with such deep faith. I hope you get this and maybe you can write me on my birthday. Because I'll be five years old in January. It broke my heart. I knew we had to respond and get back to her and, and uh, ease her pain. This came all the way from California, that's almost But like when California. Wade's wife Donna saw the note, she wasn't convinced that responding would be the best idea. I want to do something about this. Oh, Wade, I, I think we should just put it back where you found it. When I read the note, it sent chills through me. I didn't know why we were the ones that had gotten the balloon and the note. It wasn't meant for us. It had been sent to her father. I'd be up at night, and all I could see would be the balloon still floating around in our living room. I could feel like there was a presence as I looked up and watched this balloon dangling. So I tucked it away and struggled a lot with what was meant with the balloon and why it was sent to us. As Desiree's birthday drew near, she waited anxiously for her father's reply, but nothing came. Every day, she would go out there and she would wait on the front porch and wait for him to write back to her. We had a party for Desiree for her birthday. Whoa, wonderful. Good job, Good job Desi. Oh. And it went well, but there was still nothing from her father. Honey, what's wrong? Why well, haven't I heard from Daddy yet? Oh, honey, it takes a little while. It won't be long. I didn't know what to do. I felt horrible that this had happened. It won't be much longer, I know. Finally, after weeks of indecision, Donna decided to answer Desiree's note. Hi, honey, it's me. Listen, why don't you pick up a birthday card for Desiree on your way home? The balloon was out of sight for a couple of months, but it was something I often thought about, and I knew once January came that it was time. But when Wade returned home with the card, there was a problem. Oh, honey, this is dear daughter. And I looked at him and I thought, there's no way I can send this card. But as Donna began to compose her thoughts, she suddenly realized that the card might be perfect after all. It wasn't until that moment that I thought, yes, we were chosen to respond to Desi on her father's behalf. That was the only way he could possibly reach out and wish her a happy birthday was through us. And I was hoping that she would be at peace with everything and the letter would make her happy and to be at ease and not to be sad anymore. Several days later, Trish received a package in the mail. And it was addressed to Desiree. And when I opened it up, the first thing I pulled out was a little card. My first thought was this was cruel, that somebody would do this. But there was a little letter inside of it folded up. And I opened it up, and I started reading it. Dear Desiree Leanne, happy birthday. I hope we're not late. But if we are, we hope you had a terrific day. I realized then that Desiree got her answer. Her daddy did get that balloon, and he was answering her note. 
It all started in early December. The next morning, she shared the letter with Rhonda and Desiree. The way the McKinnons wrote the letter, it was perfect, and they explained it in terms that a little kid would understand. Everything in it was just the right thing to say and the right way to say it. Do something for your birthday. She looked at me and just said, my, my daddy didn't forget about me, huh, Mom? He loves me. Let's see what this present is. What? But the card wasn't the only gift in Desiree's package. The McKinnons had also sent a copy of The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen, a version Desiree had never heard before. Where am I, she asked, and her voice sounded like that of her companions. So and Desiree noticed right away that the story was different than the one that she shared with her dad. This Little Mermaid died and the angels came and took her to heaven. And Desiree seemed to understand that. Daddy's in the name of the angels. <laughs> he is, he is. They couldn't have picked a better way of explaining something to a little girl that satisfied her with an answer. Into an aerial she wasn't sad anymore because she felt she got to say goodbye to him. She got to talk to him one more time. I knew then that everything was going to be okay, that things were going to get better, and we were going to be able to move on. Looks like she got our letter. A few weeks later in the town of Mermaid, the McKinnons received a letter of their own. Dear Wade, Donna, Amanda, Haley, and Connor, there are no words to express how special your family is, except that you were heaven sent. I couldn't stop shaking and trembling. It was a, a very wonderful, a very well-written letter, and it gave us such a good feeling that we had done the right thing, that we had answered the prayers for this little girl. I want to give a special thanks to Wade for taking the time to get the balloon and to take it home to your wife, not even knowing what you had. And I was overwhelmed to realize that we made the right decision and the impact that it had on Desiree and her mom. The story told in the book has been a great help for me. And to realize that the faith of a little girl is stronger than anything. And she got her answer. Thanks to the McKinnon's letter, Desiree was finally able to come to terms with her father's tragic death. Their letter helped me getting over being sad and lonely. It brought more faith than I'd ever had to me, and it made me get through it. I was strong, and I got through it like that, and it was just over with. <laughs> After we met the McKinnons, we knew why Ken had chose them to write Desiree. Nobody will ever know how much the McKinnons mean to me and my family. They're very special people. It's a miracle recently arranged for the two families to reunite and spend a day at Disneyland. It's a place where dreams come true for millions of children, but perhaps for none as dramatically as for Desiree. And it seemed a fitting end for the young girl who loved the Little Mermaid and the family from Mermaid Lake to meet the character that had brought them together. It was a moment that reminded them of the miraculous bond they shared, a bond that was truly heaven sent. How did a little helium-filled balloon travel across the Rocky Mountains, 3,000 miles, cross North America, and land in our little tiny community of Mermaid in a little lake, Mermaid Lake. A miracle of the faith of a little girl that knew she was going to get an answer. It was a miraculous event. There's no doubt in my mind. I have no idea why we were chosen to be a part of what happened to Desi but our two families have grown very close together, and it's a bond that we're always gonna have. I think my dad picked a really good choice of people.
when I get feeling sad and I'm depressed or something, I'll just call them and they cheer me right up. I knew my father got the message because he did a miracle for me. I know that he's in heaven and he's safe and one day I'll get to be with him and we'll be together forever.